Now, good morning. The next thing I want to do is show you how we're going to make a potassium bromide salt plate. So we're going to need some instruments and tools we see here. We're going to need a um, mortar and pestle. You see there, the kind of grayish thing in this case. Um, we're going to need a way of making a pellet. And what we have here is a manual pellet press sample holder. So basically, um, this little device here, I'll show you kind of how to use. We'll have to use some wrenches. It's better, it's easier if you've got a pot hydraulic press to make your pellet. Um, and I've chosen a sample that is interest to me here. It's kind of a colored sample, and it'll be nice because you'll be able to see just how little of that we're going to use uh, with comparison to the potassium bromide that we're going to use. So, just a moment. So, now back to work. I went ahead and taken some potassium bromide, this nice white crystal and solid, and I used the pestle here to kind of grind up and grind a lot harder some of the sample. Uh, generally, about 100 milligrams of KBR is a nice amount of sample uh, uh, matrix of the KBR. We're going to use just about five milligrams or less of our sample. I'm not going to wait out today. I'm going to put a little bit of our sample in there, grind it up till we get a nice homogeneous mixture. And then we're going to place that, a small amount of that, let me see if I can kind of show, inside this little apparatus. And I'll try to show you that in a moment. And then we're going to put the other uh, screw in and tighten and try to compress that into a nice optically transparent very thin disc or pellet that will run our spectrum in. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and I'll show you in a moment. So if you look kind of closely you can see this is sort of a heterogeneous sample now. And although the lighting is not great here, you can see I kind of put one decent sized scoop in there. I want to make sure that it is uh, flat and level. And then I'm going to take this other screw and I'm going to make sure my fingerprints on are, aren't on it and I'm going to put it on here and tighten. So now you can kind of see the full assembly. I've tightened this with the uh, wrench. Um, need to get it good and tight but you do need to be able to unscrew it so this is always sometimes a a fun experience but like I said hydraulic press works really easy when you have that available. So here's a little bit of moment of truth. You can kind of see I've unscrewed one and the other. Now I've, I've got it loosened with the wrench. I can hand loosen it and we should be able to see that we can sort of see through a very thin wafer. It's hard, hard to see on the video, but um, I'm going to take this now over and we'll put it in the sample holder and collect our spectrum. So now you can see that this just sits in a sample holder inside the uh, inside the device again. I'm going to put the lid down. Obviously I'd like to have um, inert gas, but I've got a background shown here again. I'm going to go ahead and collect a sample. Again, I'm not going to worry about the name right now, although I am going to save this in a moment. And we can see after a few trans, uh, scans, it'll start showing the spectrum. And there's a lot more to look at here. Um, once this gets done with the absorbent, we'll look at it a little more carefully. So now I've taken this to percent T, and we can see the spectrum. Now, it does have an odd sort of shape that we can usually adjust with a baseline correction. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and find the fine peaks and label those here for our molecule, for our substance. I'm going to tell that to replace. So we can kind of see there some of the peaks. Interestingly enough, there is a 3400 peak that's sort of broad. Um, where there are some looks like there's some sp2 carbons um, and some sp3 um, in the spectrum 
I really wouldn't expect any SP3, but um, I'll look at this a little more carefully, but you can kind of see how we collect an IR spectrum. Uh, and then we could save it and such with our software. And oftentimes with software you can export it to something like Excel, so if you need to include it in a lab report or something. Anyway, this concludes these two videos um, on collecting transmission IR spectroscopy uh, spectrum. And uh, thank you very much. Have a great day.